All right, so a while back I was just sort of messing around and I wrote some code, which didn't even use any libraries. It was very simple. We just set up an index, which we'll use as an index into an array, which I don't know, we can put some stuff in it. Then, you know, in a continuous while loop that runs forever, we will set the array at that index to zero and increment the index. And I mean, this, this will never stop, right? So obviously we're just gonna keep, you know, blowing through all our memory because we're gonna access this on the array and then this on the array and then we'll just keep accessing, you know, random other memory forever and forever, right? This is C, there's no bounds checks. This is equivalent to saying, um, you know, array is like a pointer, we add on the index and we're setting the value at that index. So, obviously, since this program is just literally going to write to every memory location it can, it should crash. But, it doesn't. And I was so confused. I was like, what is going on? Until, I did try to actually add a library. And, print out, oh, what index actually is. Um, yeah. And you can see it's constantly going back and forth between zero and one. The way this works, right, is if this is all of the you know, memory allocated to our program, there's two parts to it. There's the heap, which is for anything dynamically allocated. We don't know its size or, you know, whether to allocate it at all, even at compile time. The heap grows up. So like the way you normally expect, you're going to, if you were to start at zero, zero, then the next would be zero, one, and then zero, two, and then zero, three, and so on. The stack actually grows downwards. And the stack is for anything. It's for a couple things, actually. Every time you call a function, what you're doing is adding a new stack frame, which has a return address. So we know, you know, where to get back to once we're done calling that function. You know, we have arguments, um, any local variables are stored here, right? So even if you were to put, you know, use malloc or whatever to put some data structure on the heap and you were to, you know, to keep the pointer of that data structure that actually said, you know, where it is, right? Here's your, you know, crazy big data structure you would have your pointer to your data structure would be stored on the stack, usually. Uh, and some other stuff, maybe a stack cookie, whatever. And what matters here is just this local variables part. We don't care about any of the rest of that. And so the way this goes is we first create, first thing we did was we created our index, right? Which we set to zero. Then we created the two elements for our array, right? And it's easy to get tripped up here and think that it looks like this, right? Where here's our, you know, this is our array, right? 169 and then 420. But remember, the stack kind of grows backwards, right? So this is not what actually it looks like. What actually happens is we have our index Right, because very, when we add new variables to the stack, they grow downwards. But arrays, we still need to be able to access normally. Right, so the array looks like this. There's our array. And so now you can sort of see what's happening, right? Is we start with the index is zero, so we set this to zero. Then we set, right, and this becomes one. Now we go here, we set this to zero. And, you know, that, that, that's great. Now this becomes two. And then we go here and we set this to zero. And now that the index is zero, the cycle just repeats. Because of where we were printing, we didn't actually get to see the two. But yeah, so that just keeps going back and forth between all of these and never actually, you know, goes into any, you know, invalid memory. 
or memory it can't access over here. All right, well now let's try to actually do something with the heap. So we'll need the standard library and we'll, we'll set up our main function. And what we're gonna do is, uh, yeah, sure. We'll create a variable for our size, which we'll start at just one. And then we'll, let's, yeah, let's, let's create some pointer to whatever we can do a chart. We'll call it pointer. And for now, we'll set it to null. Then we will free the pointer. And actually, even just this right here seems kind of like it should crash, because again, this is null is just zero, right? But it turns out that this is actually well-defined in the C standard, that free null does nothing. And in our case, it's going to save us a little bit of code because we're going to throw this in everyone's favorite infinite while loop. And so the first thing we'll do is we'll forget the pointer and then we'll basically recreate it. So we'll, you know, get rid of the old stuff and then we'll allocate a new pointer with the proper size. Then we'll multiply the size by two, right? So we'll just keep creating bigger and bigger pointers. Now, This is, this is all fine. And it, it actually does still work. But you might, might be saying, well, the compiler's gonna optimize away this malloc, right? Because we don't actually do anything with it. And you would be wrong, but not totally. What actually happens is when malloc fails, it doesn't, you know, crash or anything. It just gives you, you know, null usually as an output and it sets the error no variable to, you know, something bad. So if we want it to crash when, you know, malloc goes wrong, we can just set an assignment here. And now this will be, now, whoops, now the pointer will just be, you know, null or whatever, right? Because malloc failed, and so we'll be setting invalid memory to 42. All right, well, you we try this. And it still works. And so once again, we can go and uh, print out there we go. what the size actually is. If we do that, I will say size is boop. Okay. The size ends up being zero. And you, some of you probably guess what's going on here. Um, if I pick this into less, we can see that it overflows. And so you might be being like this. Okay, okay, that makes sense. But why are we doing this thing where we're constantly, you know, recreating the pointer and whatnot, right? I mean, obviously, if this works fine because our size is just because our size is just zero, you know, we'll allocate a bunch of pointers, and then we'll just keep allocating doing malloc zero, right? Which should allocate no memory. We don't even, we don't even need this free here. Um, and we can go ahead and do that because, right, we know it's, I mean, it's, in the beginning, it's going to allocate some memory, but not that much. And, oh, it, it does crash. It does crash. You see, in C, malloc zero is implementation independent. In some impl implementations, malloc zero just gives you null, which makes sense, right? Because you're you're allocating no memory. It, you can't do anything with the pointer it gives you because you can't put anything there because you didn't actually allocate anything. Right, so this makes real sense. Um, if we want to see, see though, like is this, you know, actually what we're doing. Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll do this. We can try and say, does malloc zero uh, give me null? And the answer is no. Malloc zero does not give you null. It does the other, 
option, which is that it allocates the minimum possible amount that the allocator is capable of. So in this particular implementation, right, which, you know, I'm just using, you know, normal GCC on a you know, Linux machine, malloc zero actually allocates four bytes, right, which is, 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 is crazy because you're, you're saying allocate zero bytes and it's allocating four. Um, but we can, you know, we can, we, we can work with this, right? So we could say char star um, data equals malloc zero. And then, I mean, we just need to say, you know, data zero equals, we'll just have it say hi. Do an exclamation point, and then we'll end it with an L character so that it's just a proper string. And this, this works totally fine, right? We can do a uh, got message data. Whoops. It works. In C, malloc zero sometimes does actually allocate no memory, but other times it allocates four bytes. It's awesome. So yeah, there we go. This is the, the final program that definitely should crash, but but doesn't.